Start approved. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Bears. It's the Ted Coningsby channel. Gotcha. Surprise stream today here at RAF Coningsby. Oh, yeah, Ted's home. We're back. And we got ourselves a Battle of Britain Memorial flight special for you today. Oh, yeah. Very, very good morning. So we're back. Didn't quite go to plan yesterday, thanks to the weather. But you know what? Let's bring a bit more of a cheer to that. We've got a Battle of Britain Memorial flight special for you today here at RAF Coningsby. We are live. Ah, oh, yeah. So what we expected today? Well, we've got the Battle of Britain Memorial flights, Avro Lancaster, Hurricane and Spitfire today for you. They'll be carrying out fly paths across the UK. Sadly, they were grounded yesterday due to the weather. They are a lot more uh, sensitive to the weather due to the nature of the aircraft. They're not like fighter jets of today. And many people um, have been questioning about, you know, why did the weather affect yesterday, um, especially with the typhoons and things like this. There is a certain cloud level for safety reasons across a city. It's, um, and of course, the, uh, the Red Arrows were okay with this and I've seen the footage inside the cockpit of the Red Arrows and believe me, that looked pretty dangerous for them. So my heart out to them. Uh, for doing that so well done um, for, for you know for those that did get involved in the the fly past but sadly for our typhoons and other aircraft um, I just want to say uh, we did put a post on our community just to say you know our hearts go out to you imagine imagine you're a you know you're a pilot and you have just taken off ready to do a proud a proud moment in your career to fly during the king's coronation i mean how cool is that and then only to be told while airborne as well it's not like they were grounded they were on the ground um it's very very sad to hear that you know and then of course i just want to say uh, my heart goes out to all the ground crew all the weeks of preparation for this anyone involved really you know the unsung heroes as people say the ground crew because they are very much involved they, you know aircraft cannot get airborne without the crew um, so no matter what part role that you serve in the Air Force and of course there was Navy and the Army Air Corps is well involved in this so this is um, they the, the helicopters managed to, to get involved in this in the fly past but if you were involved in the fly past and couldn't make the fly past because of the weather hearts go out to you from the TCS must be very heartbreaking so to feed you guys a bit more hope and a bit more cheer let's get some bbmf action so bbmf is the battle of britain memorial flight and they have a collection of iconic aircraft of the battle of britain they are known as a museum without walls they carry on the motto lest we forget This is the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, as we say, we call it BBMF in abbreviations, and it does operate here from RAF Coningsby. And the mission of the Royal Air Force's Battle of Britain Memorial Flight is to maintain the priceless artifacts of the national heritage in airworthy condition in order to commemorate those who have fallen in service of this of this country. Now, Lincolnshire, which is where we are, was known as, and still is, I guess, as Bomber County. And the Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight also serves to promote the modern day Air Force and to inspire future generations. It is regular pilot, you know, there are regular pilots that fly these aircraft. 
Um, the flight operates six Spitfires, two Hurricanes, a Lancaster, a C-47 Dakota, uh, two Chipmunk aircraft as well, primar primarily for training. The aircraft are flown by regular aircraft, uh, uh, Royal Air Force aircrew as well. So the aircraft can be um, regularly seen in the skies over the UK from May to September each year. They are flown to celebrate and commemorate public and military events too, from state occasions such as Troop in the Colour, to major air shows and fly past for public events. Now if you're a charity as well, and I might have to stop talking, look at this. Here we go. Oh, oh. I shall hold my tongue because we have this. Look at these. Oh, Look at this. So you can see the different wing form, um, the wing styles of wings between the Hurricane and the Spitfire.
off just from here as well. So the Lancaster's just started up, ladies, gents, and teddy bears has just requested a start. Start approved. to sound over its home county, Lincolnshire. And for those that are asking for the Lancaster, it has started up. It's all about the Merlins today. And what a constellation. 
we've got here for you. Ladies, gents and teddy bears, I give you the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight display of the Hurricane and the Spitfire.
gentle teddy bears. Who's got goosebumps right now? I hope we're going on this bit far up the BBMF display, Lady Shunter Teddy Bears, and what, who's proud right now? Who is proud of that? Who is proud? Lady Shunter Teddy Bears up next is the Lancaster. Oh, yeah. So right now there's communication between pilots and the, the squadron leader. And he's very, very happy with the display. Call sign Fighter 1 and 2 that was. So it's same with the Red Arrow, same with the Typhoon display team. They'll have a mentor, their squadron leader, and it will communicate with the pilots to analyse it and assess the thing to increase certain heights you know to get it all tipped up ready for the display season all good what's it like how many so Lincoln sure is gonna be purring with Merlin's and we've got a BBMF special for you guys. We've got the Lancaster up next, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. We still have more aircraft at the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. It's a lovely day. It's, it's our way of saying, you know what, yesterday may not have gone to plan, but you cannot help but feel proud of our Royal Air Force for this. We've got some super chats, by the way. Who enjoyed that? 1K. <laughs> Big shout out to Colin Bramer for the uh, absolutely stunning, stunning, awesome thumbnail. He's an absolutely talented photographer. He's a very good friend of ours. He uh, joins us now and again, and uh, he's as much part of the uh, TCS as you guys are. He's uh, almost like our personal photographer. <laughs> Man, look at this. Hang on. Let me get sight. Yeah, I've got visual. And we've got another display coming up as well, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. Who's loving this? Who is loving this show? Hanger brake, I haven't heard it. It's not to say they're not. The hanger brake does look stunning. They do like a brake right over their hanger. I don't care what bugs are on my arm right now. This can wait. Listen to this. Instead, we might have a second one.
teddy bears. Aw, oh, yeah. So this is the Hurricane and the Spitfire for those that have just joined us. We're live here at RF Coningsby. This is the Ted Coningsby channel.
teddy bears just to not take it away from the beautiful Spitfire Hurricane. Look at this. Thank <laughs> you. 
was wondering what this was the hurricane. So we had two displays from the hurricane and the Spitfire. Full sign Fighter 01 and 02. Now we have Lancaster 99. Who's loving the show? Smash the like. You're probably overwhelmed with what you just seen, but smash the like, please, and do subscribe to the Ted Connorsby channel. This is what we do with military aviation channel. We cover all genres of aircraft. Berlin fans, Avro Lancaster fans, what this means, this is just amazing. Ladies, gents, Teddy Bears, Ted Coningsby Channel. We're live here at RAF Coningsby, and this is our BBMF special show. Surprise! <laughs> Don't forget to hit that like, please. Get this stream out there. We're a bomber county, and it's looking very much like it right now. There are only two airworthy Lancaster bombers in the world. One here at RF Coningsby and one in Canada. Lancaster. PA474. It's one of the only one of the Lancasters here at in the uh, BBMF. The Battle of Britain Memorial flight. So PA474 didn't um, see any sort of the hostilities or anything like that. So it was built after the war. 
Don't forget Lady Shen's teddy bears. The motto, lest we forget. Bomber Command suffered the highest losses. Leaves you with no words, ladies, gents, and teddy bears to think about what this aircraft symbolises and the other Battle of Britain Memorial Flight aircraft. What it symbolises, what it means to people. I know there's a lot of you on the show right now probably thinking going into deep thought with relatives that served, that have been in these aircraft. Just stunning. go it's been just you know what it makes me just just it go into deep thought when I see these aircraft and what it means I want to dedicate today to the crew ground crew and pilots that, that were heartbroken yesterday from the fly past that couldn't take part I want to dedicate today's stream to them so ground crew pilots and all personnel that were involved in the fly pass that didn't happen yesterday i'm going to dedicate this stream to you guys okay. sorry 
sorry, but no match for a Merlin that. No, not that. Nah. Give me a little stuff under those. Anything else? So the uh, motto, as we said, is uh, less we forget. And the less we forget motto of the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund, uh, uh, sorry, Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, uh, sort of reacts their mission and honours the thousands of men and women in the air and on the ground that gave their lives for this country in the noble pursuit of freedom. They gave their today for our tomorrow. And I think that just leaves it there. Take care, guys. Yes, take care. See you soon. Yeah, nice one. Thanks for your support. Thank you so much. Take care. Nice to meet you. See you soon. And uh, Lady Shins Teddy Bears, there will be more. Don't you worry about that. There'll be more BBMF action. Uh, round about, uh, what was it? What was the schedule? Two o'clock, two thirty? Do you know what we didn't do? We didn't check the board. That was the whole point. But we saw them outside, so. How you doing down there? Me? Oh wow, okay, we love that. Nice one. It's fine, you just, no, I don't know why you did it. You wanted to be live on Ted Coningsby. You wanted to, your moment of glory, and you got it. Did you see when you turned around at one point? Yes, I was like, hello. <laughs> So his dad was watching the live stream and he pulled the camera out and his hand on Alex and dad sent me a message going, what's Alex doing? Sat in front of the camera. <laughs> 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 I haven't got my man for that fact. No, Right, nice one for tuning in, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. How are we doing? I can see lots of super chats here, so I just want to say a massive shout out. Um, an hour. Oh, that was awesome. So we've been treated so far, ladies and gentlemen, Bears, to two. That's right, two displays um, of the Spitfire and the Hurricane together. We got managed to get two. That was awesome. That was unexpected. And of course, we've just seen the Lancaster depart now for a series of fly paths around the country, wherever it may be going. So nice one. Lots of you on here. Lest we forget, absolutely. So ladies, gentlemen, teddy bears, that Avro Lancaster just symbolises the Royal Air Force Bomber Command, uh, which was controlled by the Royal Air Force's uh, Bomber Forces from 1936 to 1968. And along, of course, with the United States Air, um, Army Air Force, as it was known then, before it became the United States Air Force, um, it played the central role in strategic bombing of Germany in World War II. From, uh, I think it's 1942, uh, the British bombing campaign against Germany became less restrictive and increasingly targeted industrial sites and civilian manpower bases central for German war production. But this is the bit, in total, uh, 
364,514 operational sorties were flown, 1,030,500 tonnes of bombs were dropped, 8,325 aircraft lost in action. Bomber Command crews also suffered the highest casualty rate, 55,573 were killed. That's tragic. That's like a 44.4% death rate of the 125,000 air crew. A further 8,403 men were wounded in action and 9,838 became become, um, prisoners of war. Now, that's history for you. That's the way it is. And it, there's no other way of doing it. There's no other way of saying this. War is war, ladies, gents and teddy bears. But we're alive today here because of that sacrifice. And it almost came out with that. And of course our Spitfires and Hurricanes at different roles. It just shows how the world can just fall apart and yet how it can unite at the same time. That's pretty touching. The world falling apart and how it can reunite at the same time. That's that's what we're here today to witness the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. So just want to say a massive thank you for everyone that's tuned in, um, everyone that's liked and supported the channel yesterday. It was a very wet one. We didn't get our uh, fly past over London. I'm just heartbroken by that, I'll be honest with you. So we put a little message. But yeah, this show today, I just want to dedicate it to those that couldn't take part in the fly past after weeks of preparation. But ladies, gents and teddy bears, Let's just enjoy the show today. A more sunnier RAF Coningsby. My name's Nikos, and we haven't even seen our squadron leader Ted Coningsby just yet. We, it, literally, we just set up and got straight into the action. Thanks a lot. Got a Jeff like well said, Nikos. I uh, haven't even had time to say hello to everyone on here. There's quite a few watching today. Brilliant. Andy Williams, Nick, uh, Ted Connigsby, you spoil us with your dedication to bring streams such as this. And thanks from the bottom of my heart. And thank you too for tuning in. Without you guys, without your support, this channel wouldn't be here. So it's as much your channel as it is mine. It's, it's a place for you to come and enjoy, have fun, have thoughts, have a chat. And of course, have, have a bit of fun as well at the same time with our uh, squadron leader, Ted Connigsby, as well. <laughs> I haven't been there. I've so got sun cream in the car if you want to. Well, that's been so good before, but sun going on my leg, I know he's been there. <laughs> Lanny, how you doing? Lanny, the Lancaster bomber. Oh, that's quite apt for this show. So the hurricane, so airborne currently is the Spitfire and the Lancaster that we've just seen just now. And when Italy uh, collapsed, he got out of prison of war camp and made his way north. And the Nippon of Hamilton, Allies caught him. And it says he used to just sit on the roadside, just went to German troops, just hid in uh, plain view. He just blended in. We learnt lingo as well. Good to see you guys on here. Who we got? Scooby Doo, Belinda Morley, Andy Williams. Yosta Lister, how you doing? Hi guys from Aviation Geek 1 Free. Radio Nigel, how you doing? Mario, so Charlie, how you doing? Viv. Viv, I know it's hard, isn't it? Watching in the car, way home, and I have more tears than yesterday's wedding. We'll catch up once home and hit the like button, so please hit the like. Viv, we always think of you. We did put a little shout out for you yesterday. Um, how you doing, Shane uh, Davis? Uh, how you doing, Howard Klein? How you doing? It is touching. It really is, Captain A. Don't worry, um, you know, there are people that um, there are people that don't know this, but you can re-watch the live. You can go onto our channel, click live, and you can replay any of our live streams. Captain A, sadly I need to drop on. Will you take care, man? Captain A, nice one. Margot, thank you so much. How are you doing, girl? Big shout out to you. It's like you've brought the sun to us. Thank you. I drove 
Christopher Barnes, how you doing? JW Carvings, how you doing? Yeah, Jeff Light, totally. 1.6 watcher with only 493 likes. I better get our squadron leader on. That's right, we have our very own squadron leader. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Bass. This is our squadron leader, Ted Coningsby. And he's uh, just uh, ordering you to hit the like already. He's just kicking in. We are a fun family channel. We are a military aviation channel. The fun but serious at the same time too. So a uh, little bit about squadron leader, Ted Coningsby. He lives here at 29 at RF Coningsby. And he, uh, he's, he's, he's not going to stop today. He wants everyone to subscribe. We might even get to 13K today, you know. I mean, in three days, was it four days, we managed to get 604 subscribers. That is impressive for us. That is just amazing. Good effort, Ted. Nice one. And he's just ordering everyone to hit that like button. Why? Because YouTube will recommend this stream. We do have videos as well. It's not just live streams. So do have a look, have a nose while we've got a little bit of a quiet period. I do believe there is another aircraft of the Battle of Britain Memorial flight about to depart probably in about an hour. Um, this is a, just a lovely day. It's what it should have been yesterday, but hey, what can we do? This is the way it is. Now, do subscribe to the Ted Coningsby channel. Those are your orders. If you're watching it on a big screen, Ted, it looks like you're boxing, mate. <laughs> What's that? Oh, he's telling everyone if you are subscribed to hit the notification bell button. Oh, I see you're doing the button. Boom, boom. Yeah. That's right. If you hit the notification bell button, ladies, gents, and teddy bears, it will notify you of our latest and greatest live streams and videos. Now, let's talk about being part of the Ted Coningsby squadron, shall we? Okay, Ted, give it away. Uh, I think I need to interpret that, like Ted. Yeah, what do you reckon? Okay. Um, so, ladies, gents, and teddy bears, you can support the Ted Coningsby channel not only by hitting the, the super chats; those are much appreciated. But to go even further, if you want £1.99 a month, ladies, gents, and teddy bears, forget Netflix, we have Tedflix. Now, what that will do, you will have access to some exclusive videos and content, right? £1.99 a month, this supports the channel, funds us. It gets petrol in our car. Sometimes we have to stay just in an accommodation far, far away from Ted's lair, and we need to stay overnight. Now, what are we talking about here? We go to Lossy Mouth, we go to Maclu, Lake District, all the bases, Bryce Norton, Marham. Can we? Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Uh, go to Cornwall. Coningsby's home for me, well, for Ted, and I need to come and get Ted. We go everywhere, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. We even go to air weapons ranges as well. What do you get? You're asking. Now, my usual members, smash a million emojis. Smash them up. Well, actually, don't completely kill it. Um, you get access to emojis just for the TCS. TCS is short for Ted Coningsby Squadron. You'll get your very own emojis to use. That's where you can see lovely, wonderful emojis that aren't available to anyone else, just our Ted Coningsby members. You get a badge next to your name to recognise that you're a member. How cool is that? But here's where the fun even goes even further. You get access to Ted Coningsby exclusive videos. Now these are, could be deleted scenes, behind the scenes, and also just exclusive footage that I have just for our members, such as Duxford. Um, went in there, just had a little pan around, just left it for our members. And Ted does like to star in music videos as well. That's right, music videos that we create just for you guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> How's that? No, it doesn't stop there, does it, Ted? No, we've even set up, if, if you love the banter and the chats, we, you know, and you can't wait for live stream, we've even got our members only Discord where you can chat to other members of the Ted Coningsby channel. Ah, oh, yeah. And of course, here we go, because, uh, oh, one more thing, two more things left. So, you also get to take part in members only topics, polls, and uh, subjects. Maybe I want to ask your advice on or opinion on a particular subject, and you can take part in that too. And finally, because you support our Ted Coningsby channel, 
Okay, financially, we'll give you something back. We give you a discount code to use on our online shop. So visit www.tedconningsby.co.uk. Have a look at the shop and uh, get yourself some shirts, jewellery. Yeah, ladies, jewellery. Or men, jewellery, we have them. We have them. Patches. We have about three patches. We've got limited edition pilot issue one as well for our pilots. Air Hilaire patch. And that's all for just £1.99 a month. However, if you feel like you want to support the Ted Coningsby channel even more, Wow, we have the uh, Posh Officers Club. Oh no, we've got one more. Now, for just £4.99 a month, you can support the channel even more. Take it away, Wingy. Hello! What a marvellous morning. Now, this is my cup of tea. With a spot of tiffin, a bit of sunshine, and the sound of the Merlin engines. That's right, £4.99 a month, you can be just like me. Yes, I used to fly the Spitfire, you know, during the war. Yes. Now to become a member of the Posh Officers Club, it's just four pound ninety nine a month. Yeah. Wingy, calm down. Uh, yes, sir. So, um, <laughs> Wingy's explaining there. I'm talking. Shut up. <laughs> All right, Wingy, calm down. You're not Wing Commander anymore. Well, I used to be. I still have that authority. Well, you know. Fa -fa -fa -fa. So, eh, hell yeah. That's how we greet each other in the Posh Officers Club for just four pound ninety nine a month. That's right. Fa -fa 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 -fa. Where's my tipping? Now, posh officers, are you listening? Yes, £4.99 a month. You get extra discount, that's right, on our online shop. Yes, yes, that's right. it's absolutely marvellous. You'll also get extra discount, as we said, but you are supporting the channel even further. That's right, extra fun for the Ted Connigsby channel. <laughs> Wingy, I think you better sort that out, mate. What do you mean? I like it like this. It's good shade for my ear. Um, Wingy, I think Ted sort him out, mate. Chocks away. Cheerio! No, I know, Ted. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Nice one, Wingy. And Ted, of course. What a day it is. It's an absolutely magical day. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> mm. Got a little football thing there. <laughs> Archer Navy, how you doing? <laughs> Belinda says afternoon, Wingy. <coughs> Claire Bear, that's right, punching it in there. Jacob N2023, how you doing? Uh, Neil Swart, how you doing? Hello from South Africa, how you doing? Got an Arjun AV uh, saying uh, hello as well. How you doing, Arjun? I hope you're well, man. Or, is it Arjun? It may be a, a silent, is it silent J, like Arjun, as we say here in England? So I've probably been saying it wrong, but I, I believe, I might have to Google that. Is it Arjun? With like a like a British Y? Because, you know, I want to get your names right, so I'm going to go with Arjun. So I think it's probably that. No, no, I can't put Velcro on bears. That's like waxing a teddy bear. We can't do that. That's, uh, no, it's a good idea, but I think they'll get a bit emotional about it. Phoenix Rising, how you doing? Eh, hello. Marco Baxter, hello to you. Viv, eh, hello. <laughs> Andy Williams, eh, hello. Mosh, mashed up ones, obviously. Trevor Croydon, hi Ted from uh, Ted Lancaster. Yeah. Keith Cornell, must yeah. go see you all soon. Yes, see you soon, the shoe well. Love the camouflage video, says uh, Andy Williams. Oh yeah. So uh, have a look on ADSB. Air show ready, be air show ready. Nice one, Neil Swart, for becoming a Ted Connorsby squad, remember? Ah, oh, yeah, Viv, thank you. Sorry, bump in the road on last end. <laughs> and you get discount on awesome merch. That's right, Arjen. Uh, Discord link is only for members. As soon as you become a member, the link will appear. And we went down as far as Woodbridge. Yeah. Uh, but that's in the days when we had the Luke, what a Ted Sunday special. And enjoy and like enjoy it a lot. Nice one. And you could understand why they called them phantoms. Cause that's it right. That's why I, I, I was yeah, just tapping to Claire about that. About You know what? It just shows how many how many people have a special teddy bear. And we have one as well. 
Katie Weber, how you doing? Scooby Doo, Deb Sky, how you doing? There's lots of you watching from Canada as well. Dave Mabbit, Rob B and Ollie, how you doing? Oi oi. Nice of you. Ah, oh, Steve Evans, how you doing, man? Good to see you all on here. I'm just scrolling through the messages. We literally just kicked off. Amy Coburn, how you doing? Hope you're well. How's Wolves? How's Wolverhampton? Yeah, we just, well, last weekend we went around uh, Flag Fen outside Peterborough, which is, uh, <laughs> yeah, Ted's first dried out. Right, well, Hi from we're, South Yorkshire, this is Trevor Croydon, how you doing? Ah, uh, yeah, I knew, uh, do you know what? I knew that, thanks a lot, Argen. Argen, hey, that's all, uh, Argen, uh, you know. For, you know, as I've got a very good track record of pronouncing things wrong, well, I did spot, I thought, hang on a minute, I think it's a, it's a sign of why we have here. The Iron. Nice one. Now I can get your name right, finally. Off the road, Lincoln. Right, so, like I said, you're on the road, you're in Cambridge, you're off. Dave Mabbit, oi, oi, how you doing? It's a scorcher of a day here at RF Connorsby. <laughs> Right, let's have a look. Let's uh, let's go online, have a look, see what we got, where where they at. MK356 and PA474 are airborne currently. So the Spitfire just sort of over Ripley at the moment. Yeah, I'll come to you. Flat flash your lights, yeah, I'll come to you. So you notice the um Well I can now because you know what? You can't ruin you can't ruin the Merlin sound by chatting over it. There's no way. No absolute way. So now that I can, <laughs> I'll talk a little bit about the Spitfire. Uh, the Mark LF 4E, it's the MK356. Uh, it's over 75 years old, ladies, gentlemen, teddy bears. Now, it's, it, you may have noticed it's in that sort of uh, desert camouflage scheme. Awesome. So the MK356, which is the Spitfire, still currently airborne. It was part of a batch of Mark IV Spitfires built at Castle Bromwich factory in early 1944. Was fitted with uh, full span wingtips and Rolls Royce Merlin 66 engine with a two speed, two stage supercharger optimized for low altitude, altitude making it uh, a LF low flying uh, Spitfire. Nice. I guess in that sort of like desert, that would be very, very effective for low flying, definitely. On the 4th of February 1944, uh, MK356 was delivered to the RAF, being flown from Castle Bromwich to number 9 maintenance unit at Cosford, where it was fitted with operational equipment. This remarkable and beautiful Spitfire, as we've seen in that gorgeous camouflage, uh, just passed its 75th birthday um, when on, you know, currently. How cool is that? 11th of March 1944. Um, MK356 was allocated to the recently formed 443 Hornet Squadron of the RCAF, part of number 144, so that's the Royal Canadian Air Force, so part of 144 Canadian Wing at RAF Digby, only 10 miles from the aircraft's current home at RAF Coningsby. It was issued to B-Flight and was painted with the code letters 21V, 21V, so it's got a strong connection with the Canadian, Royal Canadian Air Force. MK356 flew all of its 60 wartime operational sorties with this unit between 14th of April and the 14th of June 1944. It took part in D-Day operations and one of its pilots, Flying Officer Gordon Ockenden of the Royal Canadian Air Force, claimed and shared confirmed kill against the German ME BF-109, 7th of June, D-Day plus one. Now, they do change the delivery every... Be the Around about five years, um, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, it did have like D-Day markings on there, um, and they also paint it in the scheme of a particular aircraft as well. Uh, yes, it won't have the same serial number, but it will have the markings. So as we mentioned, it's painted with the desert camouflage and it's representing a Spitfire Mark IV of 92 Squadron in Tunisia 1943. Cur currently undergoing 
um, back then it was when it was um, currently undergoing its maintenance program with the BBMF because there are every year they go under strict servicing and maintenance. Uh, MK356 is scheduled. Um, hang on, let me have a look. Yeah, it was scheduled to fly for its 75th uh, anniversary as well, which is pretty cool. No, but thank you. No, no, thank you, but stuff. thank you. I've just had something. I might actually pick you up on this. You've got to save the spot for me, though, in case Carl's <laughs> That's right, the deal. I can't be trapped. <laughs> I think you should be uh, all right. <laughs> you won't be as mad as yesterday. So again, uh, as we mentioned, the aircraft that are currently airborne, um, we have the PA-474, the Avro Lancaster, which uh, four-engined Merlin engines, beautiful. It's one of uh, two airworthy Lancasters in flying condition in the world. The other is the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum owned the other one. So PA-474 built as a B Mark I, B1 by Vickers Armstrongs Limited at its uh, Broughton factory near Chester in 1945. And it was part of the British Tiger Force for strategic bombing in the Far East. Uh, following the end of the war with Japan, the aircraft was not needed and PA-474 entered storage. Uh, with gun turrets removed, uh, it was assigned to photographic reconnaissance duties with 82 Squadron in the East and South Africa. On return from Squadron service, PA-474 was loaned to Flight Refueling Limited to be used as a pilotless drone. Wow. 1964, PA-474 474 came under control of the Air Historic Branch for possible display in proposed RF Museum. During this time the aircraft appeared in two films, Operation Crossbow and Guns of Nazarone. PA-474 was transferred to the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight in 1973 and in 1975 a mid-upper turret was found in Argentina and fitted. During the winter of 1995 the Lancaster was fitted with a new main spar to extend the flying life. 7th of May 2015 the aircraft suffered a fire in its starboard outer engine. A safe landing was made RAF Coningsby it flew again on the 12th of October 2015 after extensive work to fix the damage caused by fire to number four engine. It was later announced that with the ongoing maintenance PA-474 should still be airworthy until what well, they say 2065. Keep it going. And now we can enjoy it here, the Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight. Some baby. I'm going to take a drink now. Want a drink? What would you like? I'll have one of my purdies. You've got a purdy or a Lucas aid or a water. Mm. I'll leave my phone just there because I'm attached to that. Oops. There we go, sir. <laughs> Cool. Spitfire's on its way back. It's just over Newark. Mm. <laughs> How are you doing? All good, man. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 say I looked at your footage last night and looked at my footage. And after I finished flying... <laughs> Keep going. <coughs> Takes time. You should have seen me a year ago. It'll make you sick. It'll make you sick. <laughs> Were you, were you um, do you use LUX on that, or is it just a like pure stream? Um, do, do, do you affect your colour at all? Or is that just what it is? What it is. And how do you get your logo in? Are you going into a computer and out again? Oh uh, yeah, you can use you can use that. It's on YouTube. You can use the YouTube app. 
Ah, so that that automatically. So yeah, you, you can do it yeah. streaming through YouTube and it does it mm -hmm. that through that. Yep. Right. Okay. All good. Yeah. Okay. Just that uh, Spitfire's on its way. Oh, I better get my. Uh... Right, get ready. It's oh, not I... far. Really? It's my... not far. It's just uh, just gone over Newark now. Okay. Where I lack is your memory. Who's God? Can you pull all that off, Rob? Oh, cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Richard Brown. Great thanks, Nikos. I'll try my best, man, to keep it, you know, fun. It, you know, as you know, it's a fun military, but serious military aviation channel. You know it is. Leslie, uh, how you doing, Leslie? Oi, oi, Leslie! Not been able to comment in the last hour or so. Hope all is well with everyone. Oh man, Rob B and Ollie flying with the blades on the first of June. Oh man, that's another tragedy. That one that it, they finished now. Is that right? Is this their last year? Because oh man, I was trying to organise a flight with the blades for Ted. Oh, I'll see if I can get in contact with them again. They kind of like plans were put on hold after that. Thanks a lot, Argon. Yeah, we'll be putting the plan to next week. This, so, this, as our very, very good friend who's watching up there in the skies, the, spont the spontaneous streams are usually the best. This wasn't planned. Why not? As soon as we find out there's action, we're here. Unless we're miles away, of course. Christine Barnes, how you doing? do have the MK356 on its way back very shortly. Really, I, someone just mentioned about my sub count. Oh my goodness me, is it really a 12.8? Oh, nearly. Oh my oh goodness God. me. 12,783. <laughs> we've, done, we've done that in less than a week, that 783. Come on, get it out there. 1,000. <laughs> Just 34. Man, I remember when we were on nine. <laughs> I was so, I was like, come on, 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I got a 17 from the last video. Oh, cool. We've all got to start somewhere. I, so. I, I, there, there's no malice here whatsoever. Funny, 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 funny. <laughs> keep going. That's oh, yeah, well, keep going. You. That's the way. You just got to keep going, man. Never give up. <coughs> Is this what it's for, man? That's what we're here for. Uh, do they still? So the Dakota, I don't think it's ready yet. Um, sadly, this year um, hasn't. It's still at, I believe, at Duxford, having some maintenance done to it. Or what I do know, it is having a change of livery as well. So I don't think it's quite ready yet. Dave Mabbit, oi oi! <laughs> Trevor Croydon, bomber Ted says oi oi. Yeah, Ted's, Ted's fur has dried out luckily, so... Um, <laughs> I think it's time. <laughs> Not long now for the uh, Spitfire to return, I believe. Uh, I have got a list of where it's uh, both the Lancaster and the uh, Spitfire are going to. Ted, what's down there, mate? So that's that player bear. Yeah, we couldn't. Uh, could not stream today to get you this. So we just, uh, there's our squadron leader, Ted Connors, with the uh, RAF ensign.
during the guards march. Yeah, no, give me a second for me. I think you need some music to go with that. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a guard's march. Wait, hang on. break. I've just realised my comms have died. What a landing.
Wait, wait. Oh dear. Right, hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm a little bit tied up here, literally. Oh, that was um, Ted needs to carry on. <laughs> um. Oh. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh, come hang on. on. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> right, what's happened to? Turn there. Okay, sorry about that, my apologies, I got distracted with Ted's guards march there and uh, got caught and my coppers have come out. Right, why is that gone? <laughs> Don't worry, I can make a mistake today, so I'm allowed after, after, I got the display beautifully, I have to admit, did alright there. Right, what's going on with this? Okay, so the cables come out of there. Right, got it. Okay. Right. Oh, is this not even plugged in anything? Is that mine? No, this is good. You can get mine up one of them. You can use mine for that. No, I need the cable. I haven't got it. It's already died. <laughs> right, didn't do the checks on that. I need the... Uh, the camera back. Damn. Sorry, I didn't hear it. Sorry. Oops. Hello. <laughs> yeah, just bring the whole thing, I'll find it. Yeah, um, I didn't plug this in, that's why it died and I didn't even know it was coming. That's alright. That was oh, my bad. Back. Apologies Wrong ladies and steady bears, we can all make mistakes. That was uh, my mistake of the day, but I got the display, that's all good. Is it the brown one or the black one? No, it's been the whole thing, the yeah. camera back. Oh, well. Okay. I didn't have it plugged in. No, it's in one of the bags. Power banks in here. Huh? No power bank. Oh, hang on a minute, I found it. You got it? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I got it. I found it, it's alright. Okay, real. All is not lost, there you go. And the right cable as well. Yeah. Silly me, it's because it all started straight away. That's my excuse. Where's the D line? Can't be too far away now. Or has it gone further south? Oh, it's gone all the way down Milton Keynes. Cool. You alright? Yeah. You go. got the rain to deal with today. No. <laughs> I've ever seen this someday. 
Scream like wizard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. I to just uh, sort this out. This has gone really bad. Or not, I think it's one of those clever. It's, a, it's an illusion, I don't think it's actually a knot. Do you need anything there you else? Go. How weird is that? Do you there. need anything else? How there? weird? <laughs> no, no okay. that's it, I'm all good for now. You're not twisted up now. No, nah, <laughs> that was a, an illusion, that one. Uh oh, oh we're losing the signal. That's new. Maybe when you pass me the bag. It's a bit. Lost a few. Mm, I lost. Drop frames. 1668. That's fine. <laughs> Let's go. How we're doing, ladies and gents? Teddy bears. For those that are tracking the uh, Lancaster, it's sort of heading towards Milton Keynes. I'm just going to get the uh, <coughs> just going to get the fly past details to see where it's going from Milton Keynes. Yeah, so that needs to be green at all times. It went yellow there, but, you know, dropping, dropping again. But... So I've got it on. Yeah, that one millimetre that would have moved when you got the bag. Really weird, that tiny millimetre moving it gets you good signal. It's fine. Yeah, I think it was good for the whole display anyway, so we're good. What bag display was doing? I recorded it as well, so. Similarly did on your phone, actually. And I did on the other We've got 12.8k now. Oh my days. Oh my wow. That was, that's impressive. 12.8k subs. Ladies, gents, teddy bears. What an impressive achievement for the TCS. That is amazing. Wow. Oh. <coughs> right, so I'm just going to get the fly past details. There are more BBMF movements. I think it was around about half past two. Argan, oh, we did it, man. 12.8k, I know. How cool is that? White Wizard, shocked that we got a Sunday show. Do you know what? Rewind it, man. White Wizard, rewind it and have a look. You would have seen two displays combining the, um, it was a Spitfire and Hurricane display together in both formations doing the display together um, twice. <laughs> and then we have just had the Lancaster depart as well. Thanks a lot, Richard Hodge. 
for sharing it. Do share, do share. Let's get this up to uh, 13,000. We could do it today, I'm not sure. I'm sure if we get another display, I'm sure we're gonna get that. I was very, very happy to hear Squawk 7004, which is a Squawk code for a display. And it was overhead, so awesome. Harry Walker, I have a fly past over my home village at three, and it is a Spitfire. Yeah, believe there's something uh, local time, but around about 14:30 or 14:40. I can't remember which time it was. NS Cookie, oi oi! All oh, right, I know who that is. It's you down there, isn't it? <laughs> Let's have a look. Going to check out the uh, fly pass details for today. So ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Bears, we still got the Spitfire airborne doing a series of fly pasts. And we can track it on ADSB. It's just gone, uh, doing just over Bletchley at the moment. Doing a lovely turn. And who's that from? That is from uh, Alright, Teabag Tim. We have a Teabag Tim who's just put a little message on there. Ted, what are you going to do, mate? A shout out to Michaela. So, Michaela, if you're watching, oi oi! So, uh, for those that are just tuned in thinking, what is going on? Who's this? Ladies, gents, and teddy bears, our very own squadron leader, Ted Coningsby. My name's Nikos. I'll give you an intro. What's going on? Let's just whack this round like a whacker. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, gents, and teddy bears, how we doing? My name's Nikos. I'm the cameraman and your commentator for the Ted Coningsby channel. How we doing? Guns up. Oh yeah, there will be some guns up next week when we're at RAF uh, Lake and Eve for some United States Air Force action from the 48 Butter Wing. We're here today on a special day. And um, as I said today, this is dedicated to all the crew and pilots that had their hearts broken yesterday that couldn't take part in the fly past. Now, I say crew as well because a lot of planning, ground crew, everyone involved, personnel that, that made all that effort yeah. and to watch their aircraft that they worked so hard on to not make that fly past. Pilots that were sat, you know, in their cockpit going last, I mean, they were airborne, they were airborne. So I'm dedicating this BBMF to, to you guys. Um, so to all personnel and pilots that were heartbroken yesterday that couldn't get their, their fly past yesterday. So that's for you, okay? My name's Nikos and I am the commentator of the Ted Coningsby channel and I am the cameraman as well, and we're joined by this guy, our very own squadron leader, Ted Coningsby. Here he is. 
How are we doing? So yeah, Ted lives over here at 29, and uh, Ted's got some fighter jet action uh, to his name as well. Um, recent flight in an F-15 Strike Eagle with a 492nd Fighter Squadron. Ted went supersonic um, in February, that was awesome. And Ted, of course, has flown in a Typhoon, a very special one as well, um, known as Blackjack. Now, Blackjack ZJ914 um, had a livery change in May 2021. It was revealed on the 28th of May, and guess who was guess who was in the first flight? The maiden flight. So a maiden flight is a, the first flight of a particular aircraft. So maiden flight of Blackjack. And Ted flew with Flight Lieutenant James Sainty, the godfather, godfather of the TCS, as we, as we name him here, and uh, took Ted on his first ever flight. How awesome is that? Went round Coningsby for about 25 minutes in the very first flight, so absolutely brilliant. So the, yeah, this is our squadron leader, Ted Coningsby. Uh, he's flown with the Red Arrows as well. Um, but what else, Ted? What else, you been in, have you been in the Lancaster? Just a taxi ride? Oh, he's been in a taxi ride, just Jane, I think, which is another Spitfire, NX611. Um, that's at East Kirkby. It's not airworthy, um, but you can get taxi rides in that. So we, uh, Ted's been in one. He's flown in a Tutor as well. Uh, Grob Tutor, 115T1 at RF Wittering with the famous 115 Squadron. Now they've got a very strong link um, as well um, with, with World War II um, during the period of, uh, of that with Bomber Command as well. Absolutely brilliant with the now Wellingtons. Yeah, absolutely uh, rich and deep history there. So yeah, just doing that. How you all doing? How you feeling? You all good? Hope you're enjoying the show. So we still got the Lancaster Air, Airborne at the moment. So um, expecting another aircraft from the Battle of Britain Memorial flight to depart hopefully in the next half an hour I think I'm pretty sure there should be one more but no do you know what we've we've, we've, we've smashed the show already so yeah we've definitely smashed the show already I mean it's been great 1.6 thousand at one point I think it was viewing so absolutely brilliant so yeah I hope you're enjoying the show mods keeping it sweet and neat a surprise stream keep it the stream keep the dream we knew something was gonna something was, you know after yesterday after the rain and you know, I thought we got to do this show today. It had to be today, and what a day! And I'm so glad. You know, we're aiming for 13,000 already. What 12.8k? So, we've eight, 800 subscribers in four days. <laughs> Can't, what can I say? That's, that's that's an achievement. But yeah, subscribers that are new, thank you for joining us. Members that are new, welcome to the Ted Coningsby Squadron. And of course, our hardcore fans whether you're a subscriber hardcore or a member hardcore oh yeah but big shout out to my members that is just keeping us going keeping the stream keeping the dream and uh you know it costs a lot of fuel to get around and you know sometimes it, when i was traveling from mac loop let's say it's best to stay the night before so you you know you're, you're not driving for four hours and then you've got to set up you know it can be dangerous on the road but yeah nice one so yeah as i said dedicated to all crew pilot or ground crew or any personnel for yesterday's heartbreak so this one's for you um granddad andy 58 are you not introducing claire bear as well as everyone else laugh out loud thanks for remembering <laughs> well you need to go down there then do you want to get on no i don't and well she's saying no so uh oh, no, on my nose. <laughs> She's got sunburn on her nose, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. Yes, we do have uh, Claire Bear. <laughs> Big shout out to Colin Bramer for the wonderful, wonderful thumbnail. Uh, check out his website, flightart.co.uk. I'll put the link in the description of today's video. Yep, we got. Yep, we got another bit of movement, taxiing at your discretion, here we go! Another BBMF aircraft on its way. Alright, brace yourselves, ladies, gents, steady bears. Get ready! Film me from there, you won't see the sunburn. <laughs> so ladies, gentle teddy bears, at your discretion, the Claire Bear. The t-shirt first. You're welcome to stand on my step. You've not got a sunburn, you probably can't see it from there, so it's better. 
Ladies and Teddy Bears for our next Battle of Britain Memorial Flight aircraft. Fire of the Battle of Britain Memorial flight coming out very shortly. It is taxiing right now. There we go. Yeah. Oh, which one is this? Oh, yes. D-Day stripes, beautiful. Start hitting that like, don't forget to share this stream please ladies gents and teddy bears if you may Zero Spitfire. He's looking for a wave. He missed him. No, I'm 
I'm good. It's just a, a two centimetre spin of my, my frame is all I can do at my age. <laughs> This aircraft is linked to Ted's Beret going flying and we'll tell you a little bit about that very shortly. Here we go, ready for departure. Spitfire 97 call sign, here we go. Painted with the uh, D Day stripes, here we go. AB910 is the registration for those interested.
I know there's a few of you waiting for that. So for those waiting for the fly past, it's coming. Listen to this. In this aircraft and the Lancaster. How are you doing, man? Good to see you on here. I do, yeah, that's absolutely right, Ian. Now, do you inform the base that I'm here? <coughs> Tally ho, that sound, I know, absolutely stunning. Oh yeah. Are you on a like? I'm watching it. Good. <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> Put us on the camera. <laughs> Look at this. A typhoon on a Sunday. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Call sign for these little tugs are called Hedgehog, by the way, for those interested. Everything, all, all vehicles as well, they do have a call sign. Hedgehog. Well, you'd certainly stop for a hedgehog if that was on the road. <laughs> it's quite fun to hear myself in the background. That's quite funny. That is all good. Oh, yeah. 
Well, so yeah, the uh, stripes signify the uh, sort of like they're, they're called invasion stripes or D-Day stripes as we call them as well. Um, they're alternate uh, alternate black and white bands painted on fuselages and wings of Allied aircraft during World War II to reduce the chance that they would be attacked by friendly forces basically that it was a visual uh, paintwork livery to distinguish between friendlies and enemies shall we say and it was to stop the sort of like the probability of getting hit by friendly forces Everybody's tuning oh, in. Why not tune in? <laughs> Love it. Yeah, so, Colin, have you found it? That's it, yeah. yeah. I was behind what he's saying. Just though, a little right? bit behind, yeah. Just a little bit delayed. Not much, though. Is there something else coming in soon? Is there something else coming in, Nick? It'll just be the Lancaster and that Spitfire. Oh. That'll be it for today. Okay. There you go. So, we've just seen the... Spitfire AB910. Now I want you to have uh, a little think about that takeoff that we've just seen. Just visualize AB910 that we've just seen on the runway lineup, runway 25. I just want you to visualize something and I'll tell you a little story about that. Have, um, you can go back if you want to, that'll be quite cool as well. Because I'm going to tell you a little story and the, and the uh, connection. I'm just going to tell you a little story about AB910. That's it, you've done it. You've got the TED bug. <laughs> Oh, I'm always on the flight away. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's good. Is that taking off? <laughs> no, not quite. Okay, so, ladies, gents, teddy bears, I want you to think about that Spitfire that we've just seen departing. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story with the connection of the unexpected flight of Women's Auxiliary Air Force. A lady known as Margaret Horton, and I'll tell you the story and the connection between Ted's beret falling off and why we have it that way. So if you've visualised the Spitfire at runway 25 that we've just seen, I could just pan that round to the runway over there where we've just seen it. I would have uh, told you the story a while departing, but why ruin the sound of a Merlin engine? No way, we're not doing that. So as we've seen earlier, the Spitfire was just lined up over here on runway 25. Now I want you to go back to the 9th of February 1945 at RAF Hilberstow. Now a WAAF, that's a Women's Auxiliary Air Force flight mechanic, Margaret Halton experienced a flight on the on that actual Spitfire, that exact Spitfire, okay, that took off, AB910. And she experienced a flight that no other ever did. Now this is a very special um, Ted Coningsby connection explaining the significance and connection with Ted's Barry along who we honour it to. Now, I know many of you ask, why not just stitch it onto Ted's head? Well, that would be like someone sewing a needle through my head, and I wouldn't want that. Now, the reason we allow the beret, should it choose to fly off naturally, we would need to go back to 1945. You may wonder at times why on a sunny day do Spitfires not fly? It isn't always due to the rain or the sun. It's to do with the speed of the wind. If it's too windy, the BBMF may have to cancel their departures. Spitfires back in the prime days would need a procedure called rough weather procedure. Now, this would involve someone sitting on the tail of the Spitfire to stop the aircraft from tipping over. The Spitfire has a very narrow landing gear. So in windy conditions, the weight of a person would hold it down by sitting on the tail. Once the chocks were removed, that person sitting on the tail would jump off before takeoff. However, 9th of February 1945 at RAF Hilbertstow in Lincolnshire, flight mechanic Margaret Horton of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force 
was called for rough weather procedure on Spitfire AB910, which we just seen take off with the D-Day stripes. As Margaret was sat on the tail of the Spitfire, the pilot was unaware of rough weather procedure and had no idea he was carrying an extra passenger. Now on the tail of this Spitfire, there was Margaret Halton. The ground crew removed the chocks and the pilot took off, carrying Margaret with him. Now Margaret wrapped herself around the fuselage and gripped onto the elevator with just three fingers, although the fin made it difficult for her to fall off. She was experiencing blood rush to the head and feeling like she was going to black out. It was around 600 feet that the pilot realized that there was something wrong with his elevator, but still unaware that this was due to Margaret on the back. Um, he requested permission to land the aircraft. The flying control officer chose not to tell the pilot that he was carrying an extra passenger on the tail of his Spitfire, not to startle the pilot. It was only after the whole episode that the pilot was informed of the incident. Now, Margaret's beret had stayed on the whole time until the aircraft came to land. Now, it, as it landed, the beret uh, fell off, uh, flew off her head, now this is the connection with Ted's beret. Berets were given by the king and losing your beret came with a forfeit of two weeks wages. Once the aircraft slowed right down, Margaret slipped off the uh, Spitfire and retrieved her beret. So every time Ted's beret goes flying, it is an honor to Margaret Horton. AB910, as we've seen, is a Spitfire that flies with the BBMF today. And that is the connection between Ted's beret going flying and that particular aircraft. So Ted, you are absolutely bankrupt, mate. Um, but never mind, there we go. I heard of that incident, I didn't realize it was that aircraft. Uh, yeah, that was that, exactly. And that's the link with the BBMF, yeah. so when you have a tour there, they'll, they might tell you that story, yeah. so. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, imagine that, though, so you hang uh, 600 yeah. feet, that would yeah. freak me out. I worry about falling off this yeah. stationary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's well documented. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it and, um, oh, yeah, she did request, I know, we don't, we don't promote smoking, but she said, I need a fag and a cup of tea. That was her words. <laughs> so. I think I need something else. Yeah, after. yeah, it probably was, but yeah. we can't mention it on here. <laughs> Bless her. Um, yeah, that, that was exact aircraft. Wow. What's going on over there, that typhoon? Where are you looking? Oh, oh yeah. Hello. <laughs> on a Sunday. I know. Oh, Send it out. <laughs> so don't forget, ladies, friends, and teddy bears, this is a 24 hour base, 365 days a year. There are men and women right now on QRA, quick reaction alert. This is one of two quick reaction alert stations. There's one in Lossy Mouth, ready to scramble. Push of a button, that's what you can see. So not on this side, the port side, that's the left side of the Typhoon is, you'll see like a black smudge, sort of halfway into the fuselage. That is the auxiliary power uh, APU, the power unit. You could start a Typhoon at a push of a button and that is like basically the soot of like burnt up fuel. Uh, in minutes that Typhoon will be scrambled and there are two more or extra Typhoons ready to scramble should they need it. So big shout out to all the QRA team. There you go. Bet you didn't think you'd see a typhoon on a Sunday. There we go. <laughs> it gives you a chance to take a good photo of it because it's going very slow. <laughs> Normally when I see them, they run about 15, 20,000 feet above me. Yeah. Playing about. They all seem to be higher than the um, USAF when they're around that way. No, it's still coming this way, by the way. It'll go up a little bit and then turn. So. Keep coming, keep coming. Christopher Carr, have you got any plans to go live tomorrow? Well, I'll tell you what I am doing tomorrow. I will be doing a bit more historic things tomorrow. Now, I'm not live. Well, you never know. I might be, I might be not. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, plans are to go to a, a another significant airfield of World War II. Do you remember that I asked and um, told members about 
covering historical airfields um, that are no longer in use. Well, I'm going to cover one, and I've got someone with a drone uh, to give you a nice shot of the airfield um, that's that's no longer in use and a very strong link with World War II. So um, I'll be doing more like a, a tedumentary. Mario Charlie, Super Ted Coningsby. Gaz, how you doing? Gazza 29. Someone said Margaret Horton. Have a look, Google it, Margaret Horton. And if you put in AB910, you'll be able to find out um, a lot more about it. But that's pretty much what happened. Mike George, hello Nikos and everyone else, how you doing? What a surprise today, right? What a great, great day. Well, it is amazing. I haven't had a chance to thank everyone with the super chat, so thank you so much for that. Thanks, Gaza, for the uh, latest weather news. Gaza, I was learning a bit more today about uh, runways, uh, as a you know, with the. I learned about west westerly preference as well. When you know when you say um, they prefer runway two five um, because they can go against the theory. So I learned about um, with regards to wind direction because I do get that asked a lot. How do you know what runway is in use? Well, we shall uh, go into a little bit more detail when I can. So if you want to know. What runway is in use? First of all, as a visual, if you've got no carbons, no nothing, you've got, you know, you're just a beginner or you've left your your scanner at home, look out for this, the the runway caravan. This will tell you what where, what which runway they're using. Not all airfields, aerodromes have them. Okay, so you know, but Coningsby, Marham, just trying to think of others that have them. They don't all have them, by the way. I didn't see one at Bryars Norton, but. It's a good start. Coningsby, look out for the runway caravan, okay? That's <laughs> one indicator. Now, you, they won't be lit up. See these little yellow boxes? They're called pappy lights. Now, if you were to go sort of where the main road is, if they're lit up, and this is the case for all, you know, we're talking about Heathrow as well, by the way. It's not just military um, regarding the runway caravan. But the pappy lights, if you see them on, that's the runway again. And it's usually, a, you know, accompanied by the runway caravan. But, like I said, they don't all have them, the runway caravan. So if you see these red boxes, you can't see them here uh, lit up because it's on the other side. That, again, that will tell you what runway is in use, okay? If you've got a scanner, then tune into the ATIS. That will tell you again the runway in use. However, you could do some checks before you come here. It does depend on the orientation of the runway. Okay. Now, aircraft generally take off into the wind. So if it's blowing east, the aircraft will take off from the west. Okay. As a general rule, it becomes a bit more tricky when it's sort of halfway. If the runway was exactly east to west and the wind is blowing from the north or the south, right in the middle, then this is where possibly the what I call the westerly preference is put in place. So that here they have runway two five and zero seven. 
Now, as we said, for safety and performance reasons, aircraft typically take off and land into the wind. And it's because the aircraft's wing as well relies on the speed of air moving over it, airspeed to lift it off the ground. However, this is the thing I found out when I went to Bryce Norton. I did my checks, the wind was blowing um, from the east. So I was thinking, hang on, they'll, they'll use um, 07. I was so, you know, I was, you know, I've done my checks. The wind's blowing from the east. Surely it's got to take off from the west. Wrong. Because if the winds are light and below five knots, so that's about six miles per hour, aircraft can potentially take off or land in either direction. So this is where the westerly preference, they'll still use runway 25. So I've got to find out a little bit more about that. And that, you know, especially with um, uh, sort of like domestic aerodromes, commercial uh, like Heathrow and Gatwick Stansted, this is in place, uh, they're actually for those aerodromes, so civilian, they're actually rules set by the government to determine what to do in these circumstances. Now these are called directional preference and they say in which direction operations should be when the winds are light and there is a choice. So at Heathrow, winds are light on average 20% of the time. It, so it just goes to show how rare wind is from the east it's not that common so that that's always good to think about that's why usually you'll see them take off at runway 25 from runway 25 very very interesting the other thing i found out at coningsby is that their old air their old runway strip is still in use i didn't even know ladies gents and teddy bears that they had a runway three zero and one two look at that it's just over there amazing you learn every day. As cat in the words of Captain Joe, not that I'm a pilot, but a good pilot is always learning. So a good Ted is always learning. <laughs> right, how are those aircraft? How's our BBMF doing? Yeah, just a quick one by the way. So in the UK the wind is mostly from the southwest. So that's probably why they're most likely to use runway 25. Runway 25, 24, 26, that kind of thing. They usually use, like, you know, if the wind's blowing in a particular direction, then that's why most of the aerodromes that are aligned in a particular way, that's why they'll always use those run run runway numbers. But like I said, depends on the wind and the speed. So we're always learning here. Again, as we've just mentioned, runway numbers. What do the numbers mean? I know many of you have heard this before, and, and of course, we are getting more and more new viewers and subscribers and members on our channel. I'll just check the aircraft. How are they doing? Before I commence, because not everyone knows what the runway numbers mean as well. Go for ADSB. Let's have a look how our uh, so Spitfire AB910. Looks like the Lancaster is potentially heading back now. It's just aiming for is it safe near. So a little bit of explanation about runway numbers as well, which will probably help you with what I've just said. So to our right is run runway 07. And of course, as I said, to our left is runway 25. What does this what do these numbers mean? And of course, <laughs> our other runway 30112. Right. So you're the Spitfire earlier today using runway 25. What do the runway numbers mean? Let's have a look. So you got your aircraft. Now, if you were to get a compass, okay, which has 360 degrees in total, right? If you were to stand or be, well, actually don't stand there, but if you were to be safely outside the uh, the aerodrome, or if you were fortunate enough to be a pilot on runway 25, if you looked at your compass, have a look at the bearing. In simple terms, runway numbers are actually direction of travel. Okay, so if you set yourself north, uh, your compass, and you were to be in that Spitfire and looked at your compass, it will say something like 252 degrees, okay? 
not, I'm not sure what does that mean like runway 25 well the direction of that runway of that pilot in that Spitfire was 252 degrees okay now the maths for this the formula shall we say you round it off to the nearest 10 250 right and then you take off the final digit the zero leaving you 25 that is where the runway number is so because opposite it is 180 degrees do the maths here we go again if you were to be in the Spitfire down here or the Typhoon or any aircraft and get your compass it will say something like 72 degrees again round it off to the nearest 10 70 take off the last digit leaving you 7 that's runway 07 again opposite that 180 degrees is 25 that is why there's a difference of 18 in all runway numbers okay does that make sense 180 degrees opposite direction there you go hope that cleared that up hence why if you were to absolutely accurately calculate and, and find out the wind's direction is how you can also work out what runway is in use the day before of course well you know <laughs> hope that made sense hope you are happy with that we're learning things learning things well as we're getting more and more new viewers it's uh it's nice plus it brushes me up i get better and better when i tell that ted how you doing man ted's excited oh that's ted's mate phil oi oi <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Again, people think this is the security. Well, he <laughs> I wouldn't still mess with them. They, they no, this is the aircraft wild. Uh, sorry, the airfield wildlife control unit. They used to be called BCU. Please don't call them Birdman anymore. They get a bit upset about it. That's the aircraft. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'll start again. AWCU, that's Airfield Wildlife Control Unit. These guys save lives. Why? Because they take care... <laughs> He's doing his thing. They take care of wildlife. Now, it used to be bird control unit, not anymore, because it involves a lot more than just controlling birds. Scaring the birds, using pre-recorded... Listen to that. They have flares. They take care of hair geese wildlife and i say save lives because they try to prevent as best as they can bird strikes or hazards on the runway there we go they must time some of these uh scaring maneuvers uh sorry scaring techniques very carefully because you can't be scaring birds while an aircraft is landing because it could make it worse again um we have we have um, X AWCUs on our chats as well. If you'd like to share any of your stories, go for it if you if you want to. But yeah, they basically prevent and take care of wildlife. So just, um, I was also inf informed is that if there's deer, it they they don't take care of deer. There's a special deer deer hunter for that one that they have to call in to fire a weapon for that they don't take care of deer it's, it's one of the one of the only i think it's one of the only animals i think uh, that are in the uk because i'm sure <laughs> other countries have different problems like t alligators i'm sure there was there was a there's a um, airport with alligator issues i can't remember what uh what airfield that is so there we go so it's not security but it's for the uh definitely security for the uh <laughs> Well, it's a shame it couldn't be like this yesterday, but that's the way it is. Every day is a different day. Right, how's our, right, so just to the uh, southwest of Peterborough, PA474 heading back. Thank you, you're great. <laughs> I think you've got our number anyway, haven't you? Alex has yeah. got it, yeah. yeah. It's slowly. Um, that's the other thing. I didn't want to go too technical about runways, but um, someone's just put about uh, left hand and right hand. That is true. Didn't want to go too much into detail, but yes, if you have parallel runways, they they have an L and an R as well. Uh, who's got that? Is that Heathrow? I think, yeah, Heathrow would have that. Ask, ask Jerry. He'd know. Jerry's from Big Jets. He'd know that. 
<laughs> oh, I did. Uh, yeah, it's all good. I'll have a little bit swig of this before the uh, Lancaster gets back. Yeah, so I've just looked on the um, the ADS there, and it's not too far away. Yeah, not too far. It's a tedumentary, teducation. That's what it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's just put, oh, yeah, just seen you on GB News standing and filming from the top of the van. <laughs> oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Bears, that's right. Myself and Ted were on GB News yesterday. The weather is so good. I'm going to get more sunburnt nose, sunburnt forehead. Sunburnt nose. I've got a little white dot. I'll be tanned by summer, hopefully. <laughs> Christopher Carr, how you doing? Oh, yeah. That little lad was so funny. <laughs> when? The one that he said, Oh, yeah, you're alive. <laughs> oh, they're gone? Yeah, they're gone now, bless them, but that was funny. Mm. Are we waiting for anything? Yes, we're waiting for the Lancaster. And the Spitfire. And the Spitfire. Must have had the circle, <laughs> Well, amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Bears, only 164 subscribers to go for 13,000. Hasn't even been a week. Um, since we've had 12,000. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not long now, it's just squawking the... Which way is it coming from? Oh, okay. How far is it now? Not far. Um, it's just, uh, it's just ca aiming for market deeping. It's trying to get away as far as possible from Peterborough. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> when you was going on down there. Long as they could, <laughs> the <laughs> 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 that was a very swingy area. Yeah. 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 But I think you need to tighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to touch it. Like, oh. We've missed our flight now. And Seems alright. I'll just keep it down now. Just take some time out and just study it a minute. Into it it's and, like, happy with that. Got they got like money off the next flights and stuff. No, we didn't need the rain covers today, so that's because good. Of flight, no, it just turned it into a greenhouse. It should have been like this yeah, yesterday no. as well. If it was like that yesterday, it should have been packed. Yeah. Well, mind you, it was quite busy though, wasn't it? But we've mm. been abroad. In the end it was. It's a bit calmer today. Yeah, well, I like still. Yeah. Oh, no, we drove. We drove to Germany. My friend yeah. went to New Zealand to get France, married. Germany, Germany, five We're doing a Southern France. I said, I want to stop at Paris. You know, be your typical. Yeah, just two more aircraft to go into the show. Yeah, I'd like to go to What a show it's been. That was great. It's great. Oh, that was. We got two. They did it twice. That was really good. That was rare. We got here in good timing as well. Time to set up. Time to be ready. And we didn't plan on doing anything today, we planned on staying in bed. <laughs> we can do that. I would like to go to I'm busy tomorrow. Oh, yeah, busy tomorrow again. <laughs> A week off and busy every day. But it's, it's, I just want to go more for like. 
Now, Lady Shun's teddy bear's first aircraft to arrive back safely will be the Lancaster. It is absolutely Jay Marsh, even when there's no planes. It's a fun place. Oh, yeah. Ted makes it. Thanks a lot. Doing a great job as always, Ted, Nikos, and Claire Bet. Thank you. Little Fish, Nico is one of the best vibes on YouTube always. Brings a smile to my face. For those interested, by the way, because I do get asked this, is it Nico or Nikos? Well, do you know what? It's both. I will explain why. Because in Greek, the way the grammar works, male names usually end with an S. Now, when you're writing about me, you, you, you'd actually leave an S, but when you call my name in Greek, the S disappears. So technically it's both. There we go. So when you write when I write my name officially it's an S. This is in, in Greece by the way, or Cyprus. It doesn't actually um, work here in England. But um, if you were to say Nikos did this, um, it you'll keep the S, but it depends what I did and then the S disappears. It's really strange. And it can also have an O U if if, if it's um, Genitive. So if I, if it's my house, it will end with OU. They change the ending of even the in the verbs. It's, and it actually, this sort of formula stays with it. And all Greek male names and females have um, have an A usually on the end. And again, you add an S rather than take the uh, A off or stuff like. That. I'm not going to go into detail, but yes, you can call me Nico or Nikos. They're both. I, I respond to both. So when you call in my name out in Greek. You won't hear Nikos. You can in England because you can do that. It's just different rules. It's just the way it is, the way the grammar structure works. That's cool. Anyway, back to the Spitfire. How are we doing? Yeah, I love that Nico brackets S. Love it. It's like, I think it's four grand it is. You go for a week and you can be lucky and see. It's the, um, what was it? It's been a long time since I did grammar, but, um, but yeah. If I did something, you keep the S, but if something happened to me, you take off the S. Ah, uh, I forgot what that's called. We said if we win the lottery, I'm not going to go into detail with it. <laughs> and Somerset, yeah, that's right, I was born in Somerset. Oh, yeah, Western Supermere, home of the Western Air Festival. Yeah, I don't have a Somerset accent, even though I was there for 12 years. <laughs> no, no, Little Fish is fine, you can call me, because I get, I, people... I got this 50 50 people me Nico, people me Nico, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's, they're both correct. So don't feel bad. They are both correct. I mean, I never get tired of it. It's going in the caverns, doing the Tissington Trail. I can move there. Yeah. It's lovely down there. Not the festival. <laughs> no, no, no. Good to see you on a little fish. How are you doing? Um, Hope you're well. Welcome to the Ted Coningsby channel here. Um, hope you're all well. Lots of new new people. Gary and Jay, how are you doing? Nicholson Claire Bear, you are doing a fantastic job this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, David becomes Dave. See, it's uh, it uh, isn't that called a, dimin um, a diminutive? That's called a diminutive um, when you have sort of like a, a nickname, a shortened name or a, a different version of the same name. It's like Nicholas and Nick. There you go. <laughs> Libro Carly Bro is teaching both aviation and Greek. Absolute legend. Spit almost home. Yep, not long to go. Come on. We'll just listen out for a hangar break now. Uh, I'm just listening on the radio. So basically, it will do like a nice break over the BBMF hangar, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. Oh, yeah, not long now for the Lancaster and the Spitfire. Last two aircraft of the day of today's, what I feel has been a wonderful show. Emma Toza, member for five months. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot, little fish. Great, mate. Love your streams. You are most welcome, little fish. It'll probably come round, won't it? It'll go over wood all catch. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grandad Andy, Andy, Andrea, Andreas. Exactly right. You are spot on. No, but I mean, yeah. Tedward. <laughs> Actually, it's funny that because Edward is. Um, so, Ted is a diminutive of Edward. I think in America it's Theodore is Ted. Um, it's a diminutive. Ted is the diminutive of Edward or Theodore. 
springs that way, isn't it? Kimberly. Quadrant. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock and Hitchcock again today. Ted with brilliant planning a day trip Wednesday if the weather plays ball. So for those interested in coming here next week, they are on night flying for the week, okay? So don't expect too much movement until 1700 local. There might you might get one or two aircraft, but enjoy your Wednesday trip. I'm not taking pictures, I promise. Ow, fuck the fuck. Yeah, it's right, just drop off the Richard Hodge, nice birthday. Well, happy birthday. Is it your birthday, Richard? Is it today? Ted, Richard Hodge. Birthday, yeah, well. well, happy birthday at the end of the month. What's your name? <laughs> well, uh, we'll put, what, what's your name? Courtney. Courtney, okay. Richard Hodge, happy birthday to today. And Courtney, happy birthday for next month. Ted's waving. So Richard Hodge enjoying his birthday today with the Ted Coningsby channel. Two weeks. Oh, yeah. Big 21. Well, as I say, I've got a friend of over for me. <laughs> I'm not really doing it. I'm not much of a party. I'm having a barbecue with my family. I've got a week off work. Yeah, really well, I uh, hope you enjoy your birthday, man. Spitfire 97, very close. Actually, they're both very close. Who's going to get there first? So it's right, should be right behind me. Let's not miss this one, Nikos. So, for those who have been joining me on my journey, so the issue last year, I don't know if you know, but I used to miss Hawks every time. I'm like, this is a good time to go toilet. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that online. Never mind. But we've all got to go, nature's way. I've missed a hawk, or I didn't press record. The elusive hawk. But I've mastered them finally to get them. Red ones, no problem. It's the black painted ones. However, this year's culprit, you never guess what it is. It's the Phenom T1. Is that the Spitfire all the way down there? Yes, it is. Oh, was it ahead of me this time? Oh, that's the Lank. <laughs> Spitfire's behind us. Oh, which one are you going to go for? <laughs> well, which one now? This is a bit harsh. Wow. Oh, maybe a little uh, bit of a practice. Do you want me to flip a coin? <laughs> <laughs> practice We've got two going cameras. <laughs> yeah, true. I'll go this Stand way. You go that way. <laughs> wow, yeah, this head. No, don't do that. I can hear it. Yes, hang on, let me go this way. Oh, it is going this way, hang on. Listen to this and watch this.
it to land. Lancaster is going to do a hangar break, ladies, gents, and teddy bears. So behind us, it will break over the hangar. Hangar break approved. Right, where's the Lancaster? There she is. Oh yeah, sorry, Spitfire. Let's get a bit of both, hang on. Look at this, it's gonna be a shot. BBMF hangar lady shows and teddy bears hold tight.
Lincolnshire is not complete without this. Good to land. What a sight. What a sight! Stunning! And that... Thanks, man. Good job. Well yeah, nice one, man. Today, let's have a look. Didn't you know they were doing a display that was brilliant. The uh, spit and the hurricane, it's nice, isn't it? Shows, uh, yeah, it's so soft and smooth. Oh, it's great. You can hear that all day. It rolls, it does, doesn't it? Did you see it? Is it last week? Yeah. And they were doing it. They, they did the Lancaster. No, I missed that. Uh, I didn't get that. So they have a 
have that the yeah, yeah, yeah. Also the Lancaster. Nice. And it just said they rolled over there. Really? Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Oh, I would love to see that. Incredible. The Lancaster came yesterday. It's fine. Came. Yeah. Flying. And rolled over something. Wow. Incredible. Did you get it? to Teddy Bears, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the uh, EBMF special show here at RAF Coningsby. What a treat it was today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it for today, mate. Oh, yes. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, we from Anderby until we get there in time, but five minutes later. Is the Spitfire down as well? They're all back now. That's it for today. Oh, Right, we'll go back then. Yeah, take care. <laughs> Go on, Ted. Finish it. <laughs> Son, I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, what are you doing now, man? Come on, keep going. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's We're gonna to have to sort that flag out, mate. I'm not sure what's happened to Ted here on this one. It's an ensign, not a flag. <laughs> the ensign. Oh, here he goes. He's back now. I'm gonna to have to get him a horse. Oh my god, he's gone. <laughs> Just keep going, Ted. Well, thanks a lot, everyone, for joining the show. Ted Coningsby Channel, live here at RAF Coningsby with a stunning, stunning... Oh, you want another one, Ted, do you? <laughs> Ted wants to keep going, man. 
Well, what a show it was. I hope you enjoyed the uh, Battle of Britain Memorial Flight special. This is uh, Ted Coningsby here, squadron leader, who's going to head back now. And, uh, well, I'll just wrap it up. Whoa, nice close-up of my neck there. How we doing? <laughs> well, Ted's Barry's gone flying. Good job we got uh, Phil here from the AWC that will probably pick that up later. Uh, so thanks very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. That was an absolutely magical treat. Hope you enjoyed all the uh, BBMF aircraft. What stunning sounds and sights. And you know what? Remember what that sound means. Remember the sounds and what those aircraft were all about. Remember that. We must never forget them. So lest we forget, oi oi! <laughs> So yeah, my name's Nikos, it's been an absolute pleasure. Ted Conifby's gonna go and have some uh, salmon. Enjoy the rest of the bank holiday for the last time. Oh yeah, see you soon. Wish you well, freedom and health, yo. Bye everyone. Ted, come on, mate. <laughs> Ted, you gotta get that beret. Go and get, get Phil to get it for you. Go, go, go,